Electronic Music Podcast. All right, here we are. Voice of Electronic Music, episode number 57, with Kieran Ryder, a.k.a. Kirsten Sage. How you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> doing good. We uh, we got this thing going. There was a, uh, a couple uh, technical difficulties there with the, with the earbuds, but uh, we're, we're rolling now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mysteries of electronics. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Cool. Um, well, yeah, thanks for coming on here. Um, uh, you were actually, um, uh, Bruce told me about you and, um, and of course I added you on Facebook and then saw your, um, all of the, the, the releases that you've been uh, doing lately. Um, and I mean, you know, I'm good friends with Bruce and, uh, they just always tell me, tell me good things about you. And, um, you're in LA, uh, you're a makeup artist and a DJ and a music producer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm actually from the Bay Area though. So I, mm -hmm. I only, I've only lived here for about a year full time. Um, but yeah, Bruce is, uh, super, we have a really funny story actually, because when I was like 15 years old, he was my favorite DJ, uh, when he was a part of FA records, which if anyone knows that <laughs> you've been around, <laughs> right. but, um, you know, he was like my favorite DJ growing up and then. Uh, later in the years, I was throwing my own party uh, called EPR, and like he showed up because one of my other um, fellow promoter friends brought him in, and I was like, you know, it wasn't under Euphonic, which was the name that he used to DJ under, and I was like, I know you, and he he remembered me too, and so we just we sparked this friendship, and then he is actually the one that really educated me and taught me on how to produce. He's he's been my music mentor for years now so wow. uh and yeah he's like family now i love him and his family they're yeah. homies <laughs> dj euphonics yeah. when he had the dreadlocks yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no it was yeah it was pretty good it was I, a good time I, I didn't it was know. good music back then so i kind of missed all that <laughs> yeah right i know i i didn't i didn't know him then but i i, I now that like i've met him and, and we've been friends for a while like i feel like i recognize his the, the, the name DJ Euphonics and that whole look, you know, because I was still kind of getting started in the, the music scene uh, back then, too. Um, but uh, I was definitely aware of kind of all of these, uh, all the, the, the players in the scene, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, F8 was like the, they were throwing the best underground renegade, like, parties. And it was all techno and it was really Dark, it was dark trance, I think, was yeah. what it, we called it. <laughs> but um, uh, and I was too young to go to them because they were eighteen and at parties, and I was sixteen, so I always tried to figure out a way to get in. Like I, I know I managed somehow to get in, but um, right. but yeah, he was he was my favorite. So it's it's a funny full circle that this has happened because then I like became really close friends with his family, and he taught me music. I nannied for his kid, Alex. Like we're we're just we're tight, you know. Yeah, so, love them. That's great. Yeah, yeah. you you, uh, you mentioned EPR, and I definitely want to uh, want to talk to you about that because uh, I've been to e I went to EPR a whole bunch, um, and I, you know, I lived in Berkeley uh, for a, a number of years, probably like seven or eight years myself. So I spent a lot of time uh, in that area. But um, if you can uh, if you can give give us just a little bit of a um, and myself included because we, we've we haven't talked a, a ton, but um, how did you get started in in the music scene and, and throwing parties and and um, you know making music? Well. It's it, it went in phases because I I started DJing when I was sixteen, uh, and this is like I'm definitely dating myself, but this is like in high school two thousand and one or something. So I started DJing just for fun. At the time, I had a, a boyfriend who was a happy hardcore DJ, <laughs> and, and he was like bless his heart, but he was awful. Like he was just really bad at mixing, and I and I knew like. I just would watch him and this was when it was all vinyl still. And I was like, I could do this. And, and I just, I did it and I was way better at it. And it was just, it really, it, it really like clicked with me. Um, and then, and then I got turntables and then it just became my obsession. I would DJ before school. I would DJ after school. I would make mixtapes for myself that I'd listen to on my Walkman at school. Like just cause I wanted to hear all the, you know, all this, this is back when you couldn't really download tracks, right? So you go to the record store, you had $20 in your pocket, you might be able to buy two records, you know, so you had to really pick and choose what you, what you loved. And then I wanted to hear those tracks at school. So 
So I made mixtapes. Like, this was all, like, for means of survival. It was never like, hey, here's my demo. It was like, I just wanted to listen to my music that I love. Um, so I did that for a long time. And then I went to... Nothing really serious came of it. I, like, DJed a couple of renegade parties up in Northern California and, you know, just, like, in Nevada City area, like, stuff like that. Like, made friends um, when it was all underage parties because I was too young. And then uh, went to college, kind of kind of fell out of it a little bit. Um, and then around, like, my early 20s, I, I got heavy back into it. I don't know what happened. I just I started throwing this party at the Uptown, Oakland called Sprayzer. <laughs> that was like my intro back into DJ and it was just it was like okay I was old enough to play at bars so I kind of started doing that. I would play it uh you know, I like retail like I played at Diesel all the time when it was downtown and um like lugging my crates of records to do that. So it kind of just, you know, I, I started meeting people and then and there was a lot of a lot of events that were being thrown in San Francisco that I'd start playing at. Um and then it and then EPR kind of came in there. It was kind of a haphazard. Like I was throwing a party at Blake's. This other person was throwing a party at Blake's. We kind of like, we kind of meshed together and joined forces. Um, and then that kind of just like blew up. It was really just like, we were doing it for fun. And then it like, it was, I mean, it, the success of that party, I don't think any of us really knew or was ready for, <laughs> you know, but it was, the benefit, the secret, I think, to it was it was the only eighteen and a party available that happened so often in the Bay Area at the time. So it was, it was, it was it. Everyone like drove from Sacramento, to, you know, from Monterey. People would come from all over the Bay Area to come to EPR. Um, so that kind of that became like a full time job for me a lot for four years. Um, but then around that time is when I started to produce. Uh, and getting more involved in other parties and other crews. So, um, I don't know. And then now I'm just, then I was also doing makeup at the same time. I had like, I would just had a lot going on after a certain point. I sort of realized I needed to like focus on one thing <laughs> and like makeup was a big thing for me. And I was working in film and that, you know, at the end of the day we love music, but I wasn't, you know, I was throwing parties. I had like two weeklies going on. I had, uh, I had another party going on at the end up in San Francisco. So it was just like, it, it was a lot for me. And I think I wanted more money to show for it than what was showing, you know? So I was like, it's kind of time to like do something. So I, I got really serious about makeup. Uh, I got into the union. I started doing bigger projects and it's kind of put me in a place now financially where I can actually get back into music on a more, uh, more freedom platform where I can just have fun and like produce when I want to and hang out with homies and DJ whenever. I'm just like, that's more how I, how I, I guess it's kind of more like, I feel like I'm going back to being 16 again, where it's like, I do it because it's fun and you know, I love it. And it's not like this. Um, I don't know. I think I put pressure on myself back in the day that I needed to like be at a certain place at a certain time in my life. And uh, I sort of let go of that. And that's just, it's kind of created more of a, a relaxing way of being with music, which I appreciate. So totally. Yeah. It's I don't a, know if that answers your question. That was kind of a run on situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's what podcasts are about is, uh, is tangents. Um, yeah, but, uh, right. yeah, no, it's, um, it's interesting, you know, being in that place of, of, of music where there isn't the pressure is really where I think the best stuff comes from. Um, and you know, I mean, it's yeah. good. It's good to keep yourself, um, you know, uh, consistent with its with your productions or your parties or whatever it is you want to do. Um, but also, too, you know, I mean, it, it's it's tough when when you're you're struggling and you're younger, and um, you know, it's tough to make uh, money in events. Just kind of period, um, especially mm -hmm. with you know, like electronic shows and and any sort of show really. Um, which is why, you know, people that do make money from, uh, from these, uh, you know, uh, parties or undergrounds, um, uh, it's, it's pretty, you know, you're doing a good job, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to yeah, be, be a no, success. Absolutely. And you, you definitely ride that wave till it's not there anymore. You have to, <laughs> you know, right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and throwing parties is, was like a, an amazing learning experience for me. And I learned so much about myself as a businesswoman, like I like rose to the occasion on all these situations where I was like, well, I guess I'm like, you know, like a manager, like 
a producer. Like I really learned a lot about my, I guess the spectrum that is me as a person, but, um, but at the same time, like, I don't really miss it. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work and, um, it's a lot of energy. You, it's just, it's so much blood, sweat and tears that really goes unnoticed behind closed doors. And it's just, you know, it's a lot, you know, so I, I, I mean, I have friends who still throw, like, I'm really good friends with uh, Richie Panic, who still throws lights down low in, in, in LA now. And it's like, they still throw like the best underground parties down here. And I'm like, they've been doing that for a long time. And I'm like, yeah. good on you, man. You know, like, and they have a name for themselves. So I wouldn't let that go either. But I also know how much work goes into it. So I'm always just like, <laughs> bow down. <laughs> You know, I don't know if I could do that myself anymore. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I threw a party in uh, at, at Milk Bar in uh, the Hate for, I think, yeah. two, two yeah. years. Um, and it was a Monday night party. And, I mean, hell, that just solidified to me that you can throw a, a party, you know, any day of the week and people will show up. Because we had a pretty steady, yeah. regular audience on a Monday night, you know, and we were doing um, yeah. dubstep and electro and stuff like that. Uh, when, when dubstep was big and um, you know, I, I would imagine that uh, you know, especially at the time you, you started EPR that uh, like, like you said, there just wasn't anything, you know, cause around that time, I think a lot of people don't even realize, especially um, if you're kind of uh, a little bit younger, like there were not parties, there were not uh, clubs, um, nightclubs that had electronic music back then really. It was, you know, still mm -hmm. top 40 hip hop, that sort of thing. You know, you'd go to, whatever yeah. lounge or nightclub and it would be, you know, uh, whatever the equivalent of Drake was or, you know, E40 back then or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and now, yeah. uh, you know, right around that time though, uh, you know, the, the, around the time of, um, uh, you know, uh, Cascade and Dead Mouse, that remix they did. And, and, you know, that was kind of the time, you know, Pandora started getting big and then the electronic music really started to, to make its way into the nightclubs. Um, and so, you know, yeah. having a, a weekly there at uh, Blake's, which is now, um, I think, Pappy's. It's called Pappy's Bar and Grill. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they renovated it and stuff, and it, and it looks great. But there was something kind of special yeah. about about Blake's. It was like this kind of dingy, you know, un underground. You had to go downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know. Was... Yeah, well, and, and that's what made it. I mean, that's why I think we could get away with starting a party like that there. Was, you know, they were like, cool, bring money here. Because they, you know, bless their hearts. But, like, you know, yes, it needed the facelift that it now has. You know, like, it needed that. But it did. It kind of, I mean, it it reminded me a lot of, of Raves growing up where it was like, yes, it's this just dilapidated house we're in or you know a warehouse it's probably dangerous you know it's right. like i kind of like that feeling that underground spot down and downstairs just gross and everything's painted mm -hmm. black like i don't know what it is about nightclubs everything needs to be painted black it just yeah. looks so weird <laughs> but um yeah i liked it i like that it was kind of like sweaty and gritty and weird totally that's, it added that's, to the to the charm <laughs> it does yeah i uh, i spent a lot of time in uh temples uh, underground you know basement area uh, for, um, for a party called ritual. I don't know if you remember ritual. Um, mm -hmm, but yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, back then it was, uh, it was, everything was painted black. It had like this neon yeah. tribal spray paint with black lights. And it was just something, yeah. you know, I, I, I feel like it reminded me of if you were to watch a documentary, uh, on, you know, nineties rave warehouse raves in New York or something, yeah. that's what you would have seen. And so even, yeah. in the, even in the moment I was like, Oh, this is cool. This is super cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, no, but, and you're really right about that time because there was, it wasn't, I mean, there was parties, but it, it, you're right. There, there were these cool parties going on that my friends were throwing. Like there was a party at the rickshaw stop and I'm like forgetting what it was called, but that was the other 18 at more like hipster party, which was kind of like a different feel. And then, and then there'd be occasional, like usually a, it'd be a bar takeover. So it'd be like, a, you know, a DJ booth at a bar, but there were not very many nightclubs in San Francisco. I feel like as much as there are now. So, you know, it was that, I love that, like that sort of mentality of like, let's take a restaurant and like, let's turn it into an event space at night or let's take a bar and like, you know, make it feel like you're in a club. So, so yeah, you're right. It was like a weird time. And then it really has changed so much, which is great. I love it. I love that there's more places to play in San Francisco. <laughs> Totally. It was really limited for a while. Totally. And well, and now, uh, now that it's been, you know, what, 
10, 11, 12, 15 years or whatever, uh, since the electronic electronic music has moved into these places, you know, you start seeing uh, the, the venues kind of take shape for that sort of music, right? Where, you know, uh, people that listen to electronic music are, are pretty you know, they're pretty much aficionados, uh, music snobs, you know, and so you got to have really high end sound systems. You can't just have some loud speakers. They need to be really good, you know, um, and, and of course the lights, like I, you know, I do the, 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 the lights and the sound at, uh, Halcyon and Halcyon is a perfect example of a, a place that was built for electronic music. Um, you know, oh, absolutely. not a ton of, uh, there's we yeah. have basically no visuals uh, other than, you know, some, uh, projectors that will sometimes put logos up on stuff, but the, uh, the building and, and everything built inside of it is meant for just the best quality audio, um, and enough, you know, lighting to really make it look, you know, cool, but not something enough to distract from the music, right? You go into some places and they have, you know, projectors going with all these, you know, visuals and, uh, or, or, you know, um, uh, you know, DJ VJ loops of music videos and stuff. Yeah, and all yeah, that, yeah. Kind of, kind of distracts from the music a little bit, and you know, I've I've heard yeah. firsthand from a lot of people that that's why they like Halcyon so much is is because it's just these lights with bright colors and movement, um, and you know, fog, and it just reminds them of this kind of like '90s warehouse rave. Yeah, no, totally. That's. I mean, that's the dream. That's what we want. We want to feel like we're in like Berlin or something yes. too, you know, right. <laughs> like dark so rooms. Posh. Just... Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember when Monarch came out, the club that, and I don't remember what year this was, but I remember it was this hip hop club before and it's, you know, on, on sixth street, it was always like an, a mess there. It was just like gunshot. I mean, it was bad. It was like really like raunchy. And, and I remember, uh, all those guys bought it and like turned it into Monarch and they were the ones that got really serious about the sound and like they're like this is a club you know I mean yes you have the upstairs bar and stuff so there's like these different spaces which is cool but the downstairs was like good sound dark room done you know and they kind of did that I remember just being like cool finally a space that's right. like you know <laughs> not and, and not as daunting I mean this is before they also bought um uh, what's it called? I always face, but it, what used to be the mighty because they also bought that space. You know what I'm talking yes, about? What's that place? Great, Great Northern. Northern. Yeah. Great Northern. Yeah. So that was also one of the only clubs that like, I remember going to by myself and just like dancing like at 21, just, you know, they created the space. It was just like perfect. So right. San Francisco has always been sort of known for that. And I, I love, I'm proud to say I was raised in the Bay because I've met so many promoters all over the world and, and DJs and they're always like, ah, we've always wanted DJ in San Francisco. There's, there's a, this like, because of the original underground rave scene that kind of started, I think it's, it's a special place that people always want to be a, a part of in some way. I've noticed. Totally. I mean, uh, you know, I love LA um, for, you know, for many reasons, um, you know, and New York and all these other places, but you know, I, I think you're right. San Francisco really has kind of this, um, just this music culture that's always been so ingrained in you know the the um the environment and uh, the community um and it's still there you know i think it's better better than it's ever been um and you know there's mm -hmm. not uh you know other places have other things that are special about it and you know san francisco has a lot a lot of uh, stuff to visit and all that stuff but in my opinion the best thing about san francisco is uh is the music scene you know yeah absolutely i mean that's <laughs> it's really the only reason why I ever want to go there anymore. <laughs> it's to go see a homie DJ or like a party or, you know, like totally. I love being at night at nighttime in San Francisco is the best. Oh yeah. I'd say. And just so easy yeah. to get around. You know, I, I, I toss back and forth, uh, I've, I, you know, for a long time live, uh, moving down to LA. Um, but I think that's the thing that I would miss the most is how easy it is to get from, um, you know, uh, downtown Soma, uh, at a, at a, you know, uh, yeah. a party to uh, a bar in uh, the mission or the Castro or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I used to, I mean, part of this, before I really started DJing DJ night, I was also like a street promoter for who, for Hill Huerta, who still runs street promotions in San Francisco. I bless his heart. He's been doing it for so long, but, um, you know, that's when we, I was the kid that put flyers on your car when you were like parked at night, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we, we would hit, the entire city in one night we'd be like a team of 10 of us and we'd go in pairs and we just like poof, and it used to be like the china basin area and then downtown and it was just like we mapped that city down i mean it was just that was another fun time of just running around and yeah you could get around just so easily we'd like meet up and drink beers and then go back out and 
you know, it was like, it is, it's great. Seven by seven. It's so small. I do miss that very much. <laughs> That's why in LA, like I just, I just hang in my area. I really, if I can avoid ever leaving it, I do. Right. <laughs> I just, that's like how you survive here. You just, you find your neighborhood or your couple of neighborhoods that are next to each other. And you just kind of like, this is my city. <laughs> I don't live over there. You know, this is my corner store. So. This is my groceries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. yeah exactly. It's like the means of survival for sure. Totally. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, um, the, to, to dive a little bit further into EPR, I mean, that was, that was a party that I met um, uh, so many of my friends at that I still have today. And uh, so many of them, I mean, just like, you know, uh, gush over memories of, of EPR. And we were all like pretty sad when it, um, when it closed down. Uh, what, you know, how did you, how did you go? Were, were you a part of when it transitioned into San Francisco? Cause I know there was a little bit of drama there and I don't know how, how much you want to yeah. go into that. You know, <laughs> feel free okay. to, to talk as much um, about it as you want. But. Yeah. No, it's so funny. It's, it's like, this is my, like, uh, like, I always imagine if, like, being a politician, there's always, like, those, like, you know, those juicy stories you try to avoid talking about. But, no, I I've, I learned so much from that experience, and I, I don't regret any of it. Um, but, yeah, no, we did a – we started in Berkeley, then we went to San Francisco. And it was a club that doesn't exist anymore. It's across the street from uh, from Temple now. I forget, it's, like, a restaurant or something now. Or, like, some – it got bought. This is, like, when the city started being developed and, like, things were just going – um, but yeah, no, we, I was, I was with EPR all the way through city nights and then at, at city nights, it was about four, four years in. That's when, uh, that's when I left. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it was crazy. I mean, yeah, I met, I met some of my best friends there and, um, you know, I don't know. It was kind of crazy because I'd like be on public and people would be like, Oh, you're Kieran Ryder. Like I saw you DJ and I'm like, what? Like, this is so, you know what I mean? It was like, there was like a little local, like crazy following to it. And, and I just, I, I really took pride in, in knowing how many people, like I said, being young and not being able to go to parties, like to see euphonic when I was 16, like broke my heart. Cause that was like all I wanted to do. So to be able to create a place for, for younger kids that could go every week. I mean, I, I would have kids hit me up on, facebook and just be like thank you so much like this is like this is what me and my friends do like this is our out you know our like release for the week of school and all that stuff and it was just it was nice to be able to provide that because that was something i was always striving to have when i was young um and, and it kind of just happened honestly it really really got away from us i feel like all of a sudden this party was massive and we're just like okay um so i think there was a lot of growing pains there and and i you know learned a lot about being a legitimate business person and uh, had a lot of hard learning experiences <laughs> through that process. But, um, but no, I mean, it's a time I'll cherish forever. And, and, uh, and I learned so much. I mean, that's, that's to me, like, that's the most valuable thing about everything in life. It's like, if you're not learning something, you're doing something wrong. Like you're stagnant. Things shouldn't be the same. Things shouldn't just be easy. Things shouldn't, none of that should be happening. You should, there should always be challenges and, and hardships and learning experiences. And, and, and that's, that's what makes us evolve, I'd say as humans. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, so are you, uh, are you still doing uh, events at all uh, in LA or are you, you're pr primarily focused on production and makeup artistry and that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I haven't thrown events. I've, I, I'm like a oddly associated with some with some people. Like I said, my friend Richie, who does lights down low. Like I, I go and I support, and I, 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 I mean, I love like not being a part of it now. I'm just enjoying it. I'm like, oh, I get to be like a patron again. <laughs> just like That's go nice. and enjoy the experience. Um, and you know, I'll help them out sometimes. But no, I haven't thrown parties. I mean, I feel like that. I could see that changing in a different way for me in the future. Um, I've had some interesting opportunities with some pretty cool companies that, that have kind of brought that back into my circle since my sort of, I guess, explosion of makeup art has kind of brought me into a different light with society right now. So, so it's, it's kind of interesting how, how, how doing makeup and, um, 
for lack of a better word, the fame I've achieved as a makeup artist has brought my music back into that in, the, in an interesting light. So I'm excited to see where that takes me um, just as an artist. I guess that's just what I call myself now. Just like I just like to do art. And I, and I do really like creating a space for people to, to share those energies. So mm-hmm. throwing events, am I done? No, but I don't really know what that looks like right now. I'm definitely very busy with makeup. Obviously not right this moment. <laughs> um, I was about to go, you know, so I did makeup for season one of Euphoria. And then I left and went to Georgia to do this other show for eight months. And then I, right when I came back is when everything went crazy. We were about to start season two of Euphoria. And then, um, and then they're like, nope, we're shutting down. Hollywood shut down, you know. And so I have like six months of time to kill right now. So it's been a little stressful, but... I am actually so thankful for the time. Um, you know, I, I like get to work on my house, like I said, and you know, I, I, I moved here a year ago, but I've been gone eight months of that. So I haven't really been able to like enjoy my space here and I get to work on music, which is something I didn't really get to do. Like I said, I bought this new computer cause I'm like, all right, no excuses. I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get back into that cause I really did take a, I really did take a hard stop from music. Um, which was really hard for me to do. I, I didn't want to give up what I was doing, but I just knew I had to, uh, I, I was kind of a jack of all trades for a long time and I needed to like really focus on one thing. So I'm glad I did. But now that I did, I, I kind of have the, the means to go back into music. So I'm dabbling with that. Um, I'm, I also have other projects that I'm working on. So I'm actually kind of glad that I have the time right now to kind of reflect on that and kind of just like, schedule my day how I want to. I'm just like, I'm going to work on this project and then I'm going to go for a walk and then I'm going to drink a beer and then I'm going to, you know, I don't care what time it is. I'm going to watch a movie and I'm going to write down, you know, like some sketches, some makeup I want to do. And then I'm going to like go back into music, you know? So it's, it's been really fun um, having that sort of, I don't know, just creative freedom. It's weird, right? I mean, you know, uh, I feel like I keep thinking about this before, you know, when we all were so busy working and stuff, um, you know, so many of us, especially the creatives, just wished that we could do nothing but, you know, focus on exactly what it is we wanted to and <laughs> like, have all this time, you know, yeah. and then now we're like thrust into uh, into exactly that. But it's under these weird terms where, yeah. you know, now we're being forced to like stay at home. And so and, you know, the economy's in shambles and we're facing maybe another you know great recession or depression or what you, whatever you want to call it um you know yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's wild it's, it's wild terms to have the and i've struggled with a little bit you know i for a couple of weeks there maybe you know only recently have i really been able to dive back into into music because every i mean you know yeah. when everything is on fire it's tough to really be like i'm gonna make an upbeat house song right now <laughs> you know yeah no i know well and that's it absolutely i mean it's it's been such an emotional roller coaster for me. And I, I also am, you know, I, I was watching your interview with Bruce and like a lot of things that Bruce had to say, like, I was just like, Oh, amen. Cause that's how I feel. It's kind of like, um, I also do energy work. I mean, I was raised very unorthodox. So I, my mom's a channel and a psychic and, and we, we do energy work together. Um, we do like land clearings. So just some background, like, well, you know, if a piece of like, for instance, like a uh, realtors would come to us and if they couldn't sell a house and we're talking like million dollar homes in the Oakland Hills, right. They couldn't sell this house. We'd like go in and we clear the energy. We'd like re, you know, kind of, we wor- work more with earth, earth energy. So bringing life back into the house usually helps people feel more at home there. Um, and so, so anyway, so I, I do a lot of weird stuff like that. And like that, makes me very sensitive to energy and when this was going on i mean i'm like the first month (laughs) or the first three weeks i mean i really was like debilitated i was just like you know and i i think it doesn't even take uh you know an empath or anyone like me it's like everyone i think has felt this to some degree um i think it's really i think it's really important because I feel like what we're being forced to do right now is to be present mm. with ourselves and, and we, and we're not really allowed to have as many distractions as that we had before, you know, like work is always a great one or fam, you know, friends, family, like drama, like there's just, there's so many things that can distract you from looking at who you are, 
what you're doing for yourself? What are you contributing? You know, are you learning? Are you evolving? And I think, you know, it's hard even, even the people who are conscious of those things, like you and I, and people who like think and are thoughtful, you know, the rest of the world that drives our ship, they're not always on the, those same levels. So I think to have everything go down, is just, it's actually, I mean, as much as it's uncomfortable to us as personalities where we're like, wait, but like I, like I was like, I was about to go back to work and I was all geared up and like, you know, I want to buy a house in a year. And like, that was messing with my income. And you know, I, I had to give up, let go of the form. It was like, you're going to get what you need. Like right now, this is what you need. And I was like, Oh, once I like got that message, I was like, this is what we all need right now. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate. I mean, I, I have a house. I have, you know, I have savings. I can, I can survive this. You know, I feel for the people who don't have that. And like my good intention, I think is just to like hold the space for humanity right now to just sort of like take the breather and like, let's reflect on where we are right now. You know, it's, it's really, it's really important because here's the thing. We couldn't have kept going the way we were going. Like it would have taken this, what else, what else would make us stop and like really look around right now? It, it had to be something like this. And so when I really look at that, I'm like, this is like a gift in my opinion. Um, and I know like when I go back to work, I'm going to be like, man, those are the days. And I just <laughs> like, you know, like it's kind of crazy. It's like, usually we feel bad about, you know, maybe not having anything to do or like, Oh, I didn't get anything to done today or whatever. But in a way we're getting like a pass to really just, melt and fall apart and then and rebuild ourselves the way we want to and um recreate where we want to go in life you know where where are our intentions where 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 do we want to participate with society you know and, and i think as a as a consciousness level if everyone starts thinking this way it holds an energy that is hard for i guess the opposing energies like the government and all these things that we have issues with to necessarily keep going that same direction too. You know, and I think a lot of people don't think about this, but we have, we have all the power in the world to like change anything if we wanted to, especially in a large group. Right. So, so yeah, I think, and I think another thing, tangent time, mm -hmm. but um, <laughs> another thing is that like, that's, I just love that everyone's feeling the same thing. I mean, when have we all as a humanity agreed with one fucking thing right. and that's how we're all feeling right now right. i mean that's beautiful we're all experiencing the same thing so we're all having some understanding some levity there's there's more human uh awareness and understanding for one another that's been so lacking for so long you know so every day i'm honestly like wow this is amazing like i don't want it to go back I, everyone says when a thing to go back and i'm like no we have to come up with a new, a new word for that because we can't we can't go back to that a new reality this is too good yeah 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 no I'm, totally. I'm right there with you you know it's uh it's you know what it's done is it's kind of dropped the the curtains uh it dropped the veil on what we were all living in the pretenses we were living under and Absolutely. now it's like oh you mean we don't all have to you know show up to this giant <laughs> office and uh yeah, slave yeah. away and sit in two Love hours of traffic one. and you know <laughs> yeah, yeah and there's all these silver I hope linings that really, like yeah i hope like in la i hope la figures that out because like we don't need to be polluting the earth with all these cars driving around every day we don't right. need to right. and like polluting our systems with just stress and you know yeah. it's just unnecessary energy that's being right. put out every day you know people could be so much more uh, productive I, if they just had more time and they were happier and they could do what it is yeah. they wanted and you do you do work you show up you get your job done you you help people uh, you know but it doesn't yeah. have to be this thing where you where you you give your life away you know 80 percent of your life and then and then 10 percent is given to your family and then oh maybe you're lucky to have 10 percent left over to to do what it is you care yeah. about you know well and that it really speaks to how we've built our culture around work because work is god in our culture like if you're not working you're not valuable um you don't have anything to offer mm. Um, I think especially like men get this, you know, if they're not working, they can't provide, they don't have a job, you know, it's a, it's a whole, it's a, it's, it's how we value each other, mm -hmm. I think a lot. And, um, I, yeah, I mean, it, it's for me, like I grew up, all my parents 
my, I mean, I've, I've got like step parents, parents, I've got like everyone like works for themselves for the most part. So I've been raised in a very self-sufficient way of thinking where, uh, you, you create your own schedule, you create your own day. Like you have your own business. You, you, you know, you get, there's more empowerment there when you sort of get to create how you like to work in a day. So I agree with you. It's like, it'd be nice if people, when they do go back to work, they can be like, okay, cool. I'm going to wake up and have coffee. I'll hit you back. You know, I'm going to do some emails and it's like at everyone's body works differently on how they kind of function. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just like school. All these kids going to school every day. It's like not everyone functions and learns the same way. It's going to school in your stereotypical type of schooling environment in America. You know, some kids learn differently, just like some people work differently. And, And so I hope I, you know, like I said, I hope we go, we go into a place where we can kind of honor each other's, needs and experiences a little bit more than just this cookie cutter way of thinking about things. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I've, I've kind of set my life up, you know, especially as of the last couple of years, um, and I did the whole corporate thing, the corporate grind and, and that was, it was fine. And I learned a lot. It was still kind of music and, and audio and video related. I was doing like corporate AV stuff, but, um, you know, as of the last couple of years, I really structured my life. I, I kind of was able to, to start over, um, and, uh, say, you know, what did it, what is it that I really want to do? And, and, you know, to a certain degree, I kind of fell into what I'm doing now. I've always been headed in that direction, kind of always surrounded myself and focused on audio and video and graphics and sounds and music and all this stuff. Um, but, you know, I find myself now, you know, at, at Halcyon, I've been there for a year and a half and, uh, it's definitely a different lifestyle than most people live. You know, I, I work weekend nights. <laughs> Um, and so I have to give up my, my weekend nights and I can't go out, but at the same time, I, I, I I work at the nightclub that all my friends go to. So I get to see my friends out. I'm just confined to that one, to that one venue. But, um, you know, it's, I, I got a little bit of a taste of, of what we're experiencing now, um, over the last year and a half where, you know, I have much of the week to, to focus on music and my other projects. And of course I'm, you know, uh, doing maintenance and, and planning for the next weekend and that sort of thing. But, um, it's, uh, you know, I think everyone's kind of getting to experience, uh, that a, a bit more now is, um, you know, just like yeah. you said, what do I want to do? Oh, I'm going to wake up and have some coffee and I'm going to, you know, work a little bit, do some, you know, uh, do some music and then maybe drink a beer and go for a walk. And it's just, it's really nice. Yeah. You know, it's, it's refreshing. Yeah, no, it's, it totally. And I just, like I said, it's just, it's more empowering, I think, than yeah. ha- having your daily schedule dictated to you, yeah. you know? And I think not to get into like conspiracy theories, hey, I'm down. <laughs> but I think, you know, I think that's uh, where government would prefer us to be taking orders and not thinking for ourselves. So I think this is their worst nightmare because everyone's sitting around at home conjuring up creativity right now because they don't have any other choice. And like when humans are left with their own devices in a way, it's like, that's what we, the beauty that we have is our creativity. We can just go, you know? So well, I think, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, it's more empowering to be, to be able to control your own day, you know? And I think it takes a lot. I've met people who like, are like, well, I don't know if I could do that. Like, and it's, it's really true. Cause we're so conditioned. We go to school, we get homework, we're told what to do. Like we get a job, we're told what to do. You know, it's, it's, it's we're conditioned to, to kind of follow the rules. That's yeah. how we're conditioned to be. And so when you're told, you don't have to follow the rules. There is this process. I've seen people like deer in headlights. They're like, well, what do I do now? And it's like to, you have to really like, it's just, uh, I don't know, deprogram yourself into yeah. thinking um, that you need somebody to tell you what to do. Right. You know? Well, and, in, in, a, in, a, in a crude <laughs> metaphor, it's, uh, it, it reminds me of, um, you know, rats being in a cage. And if you've ever seen animals that have been caged up for a long time and then, and then you, you, you drop the walls and there's no more cage around them and they kind of sniff around and they're like, Oh, wh- where, where, yeah. where are those walls that were there a few, you know, for the rest of my, my entire life. And all of a sudden they're yeah, not there yeah. and they're poking around and it's the same kind of thing. It's like the walls have kind of been dropped and now people are just like you said, deer in the headlights, like, Oh, what do I, what do I do with all this time? You know? And now it's, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful I, I have, you know, uh, way too many, um, hobbies and stuff like that, that I can, that I can dive yeah. into. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a strange yeah. time to be alive. Oh, I think strangest, <laughs> honestly. And then this is another thing I thought about. I was like, can you imagine? I mean, these things have happened before. I love, this is what I love about humanity 
we always get comfortable in what we're doing. And then it's like, oh, you know, a pandemic's happening. And it's like, this has happened so many times in history, by the way. If you look through history and, and more people dying and, and it being this crazy thing. And it's like, can you imagine not having the internet during a pandemic when that shit's happened before? <laughs> Can you imagine not having streaming content or delivery groceries like during a pandemic? I mean, people just sat by their radio, like waiting for the news. Maybe if the radio, you know, when families could have maybe afford a radio in certain times. So it's just, I'm very thankful. I, oh I'm like God. every day, I'm like, you know what? I'm glad <laughs> I'm in a pandemic now. Absolutely. And not a hundred years ago. <laughs> not the Spanish flu. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, exactly. At, at, at Burning Man this last year, there was a night <clears throat> probably about halfway in. And, um, I, you know, I, I was really, I mean, as you do, you, you're up for a day or two and then you kind of crash. And um, my, my schedule was kind of all out of whack and um, I ended up sleeping through most of the day. And then I woke up. Um, probably around like, like, you know, uh, seven, eight, the sun was starting to go down and, uh, I, I look around and my entire camp is gone. So every, you know, I was sleeping. So everyone just went off and did their thing. And so, you know, I'm there in the camp and I, and I wasn't really feeling all that great. And I was kind of trying to, to not push myself too hard. Cause I didn't want to like really get sick and then have to, you know, miss out on a ton. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to like just hunker down and just like hang out here. And it must have been, it, it was probably between six to eight hours that I did nothing. I just, I, I couldn't sleep because I had slept already for like eight hours and I was in mm -hmm. this hammock. Yeah. I was in this hammock for probably six to eight hours doing nothing. And it was like, I had nothing but my thoughts, nothing but my own brain. And mm -hmm. it was just the yeah. one. And, 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 you know, I, I could have gone out, like I said, but I, I didn't want to push it. And so that was like, that was a really eye opening experience because I was like, there's of course no cell service, so you can't just hop on YouTube. There's no whatever, um, and you know I didn't. Yeah. Want, I couldn't listen to music because I didn't want my phone to die, and you only have limits. So I literally just sat there for like six to <laughs> eight was, hours. This was management, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, holy shit! Like I cannot imagine being in jail or <laughs> or prison or something, or, yeah. or in a pandemic without internet or something because it's it's a yeah. weird, it's a weird thing to just do nothing but think for eight hours. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, and in some ways, in some ways, you might come up with some of your best ideas <laughs> yes. without even the internet to distract you. I mean, that's for sure. That's another thing, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have these things to fulfill us when we are feeling that like bored and we need some sort of stimulation. But at, that being said, I've noticed I now have to manage my time with my phone mm. more than I ever have. Like when I work, I work between 14 and 18 hour days, I'm on set. I use my phone all day, but I'm, you know, talking to my boss or I'm texting, you know, it's, it's a whole work related thing. And, you know, people text me and I'll, I'll never get back to them because I forgot. I'll see the text days go by, you know, I go home, I go to sleep, I wake back up, you know, it's just, it's kind of a weird thing, but, um, you know, here now I have to, I'm, I just have to be like, okay, I literally have like no phone time. Like after a certain time, of the day. I mean, let's, it really depends on the day, but you know, as my job with makeup, I, you know, people I'm on social media. It's just as an artist, like I have to be, you know, I feel that's where I feel like I have like handcuffs a little bit. Cause it's like, I can't not be on social media now to promote myself. Like that's where I make money. Yeah. So it's, you know, so it's important to be on there, but I also have to really like balance that. And, uh, that's probably been one of the hardest things for me to do this entire time more than, <laughs> than a lot of the things we've discussed. Totally. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm the same yeah. way. I, I have to be on social media and, um, it's, uh, you, you do, you have to keep it in check. You know, you have to, cause also too, I mean, everybody, nobody has any sort of structure right now. Everybody has all the time in the world. So, you know, I find myself, right. uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, oh, I'll get a phone call here and someone wants to do this streaming thing and this and that. And to a certain degree, you just have to, I, I'll put my phone upside down, you know, face down and put it away, let it charge. And like the other day I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to work on music and I'm not going to do anything else. Mm -hmm. I, I smoked some weed yeah. and like that also. So, yeah. you know, when I, when I smoke, I, I like, um, it, it makes me even more introverted. So I'm like, I, I'll, I'll force, yeah, I'll, me too. I'll force myself to just get stoned and put my phone away and just, fo <laughs> yeah. just focus. And yeah, it was really great. No. I, I, I had a pro probably 10 hours of, you know, it was a Sunday or whatever, and just 10 hours of just working on music. And I got like, 
most of a song done and it felt really good. And, and I'm trying to do that more, especially amidst all of this, this uh, chaos, you know? Yeah, no, that's great. I know. I, I found that I used to have like chargers in every room. So wherever I'm at, I can, but now sometimes I just, I only Let charge my phone in another room. Right. Yeah. I, or just like, I gotta go charge it. And that's when I take a break from my phone, right. <laughs> um, right. which is super helpful, but, but no, that's great. I know working, smoking weed really does too and it depends on the strand i've noticed some strands don't do this for me but i really get like i guess i started sketching again which mm -hmm. i used to do when i was really young and now with makeup i just have to do it to sort of like come up with ideas and i will find myself looking like i'll put a movie on and i for an hour has gone by and i have no idea what's happened <laughs> and i'm just like have all this stuff and i'm like whoa bro lead you know it's like <laughs> it's kind of reminds me of how it used to be with weed it's weird i've like been reliving uh what it means to be stoned also during this time right you know i used to like stop smoking because it would stress me out too much and it can give it give me anxiety sometimes if i have like a big job like i just i really had to do pick and choose when i do it but now i've like found a kind of a new relationship with it where it's been more comforting and opened up myself creatively. And I don't know if that has to do with me um, because I'm being better at managing myself now that I'm back at home. Like I said, doing my own time management and that's sort of given me more empowerment. So when I do smoke weed, I don't get anxious for all these things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's been, I, I agree. Yeah. I share that mo that with you. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I experienced the exact same thing. I, I think to a certain degree, it's uh, when you're younger, it's this thing where you're like, you party and you know, everyone gets high and whatever. Um, but you haven't really figured out life. You know, you haven't figured out you're in your twenties or whatever, and you're not really sure, or, or even younger, and you're not really sure, you know, uh, how things work and you know, this and that. And then you get to a certain age where you're kind of like, Oh, I, you know, nobody really has this figured out. Um, and everyone's just kind of, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah. and, I, and I have a job and I work hard and I, and I kill it at work. And, uh, you know, um, I have a lot of great friends and all my bills are paid. And you're like, well, you know, mm -hmm. weed's kind of taken on a new thing now. And, and for me now, it's kind yeah. of this thing where it's, it, what it does is it, it helps me, um, it, just like I said, get, get more introverted, uh, like, like almost like a light switch. And all of a sudden, yeah. you know, I'm no longer interested in Facebook. I'm not interested in Instagram. None of it is interesting. What's interesting to me, in, in, in like almost like steroids, is my synthesizers and my DAW and uh, my That's drum great. machines. And so it's, you know, what it does is it's in a very simple, realistic way. It, uh, it, it brings out the kind of uh, explorative, um, you know, kid in me. That uh, I was just about to say that, yeah. The, you know, the adult in yeah. me looks around. I'm like, well, I have all these cool, you know, pieces of gear, and uh, but I should probably check yeah. on X, Y, and Z thing. Um, and it flips, right, it flips right. that, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, let me let me see what sound I can make here. And then before you know it, yeah. you know, six hours have gone by, and I've got some cool track made. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, being connected with your inner child is what I think you're talking about. Yeah. In more cheesy hippie terms, I'm going to say inner child. Yeah. Um, it's so important. And like that, like that's another thing we should be doing every day. Like we should be, we should have free play. We're like, whatever you want to do, <laughs> you just like turn off the world and just like be whatever you do as a little kid, you know, and, and mm -hmm. sort of all the, all the, the restrictions that we put on ourselves as adults can just kind of like go away. Totally. I will say this and I'm going to get into, I'm going to, I'm going to one up you here or just, I'm going to raise the ante. <laughs> But I've been experimenting with microdosing shrooms during this time, which has been life changing. And I'm like, why haven't I ever done this before? Um, you know, I've done my fair share of drugs, of course, as a DJ my entire life and a raver or whatever. Like I I'm one of those people that I actually think drugs are great. And I think when used properly, they all have their own uses. Mm -hmm. Um, of course there's more scary ones that I wouldn't really recommend <laughs> to do, but um especially with the hallucinogens and stuff, I think when used properly, they're so therapeutic and, you know, there's studies, like we all kind of know this and, and I kind of knew this too. And I was supported it, but I never really used it, um, in this way. And it's, it's, it's just like changed my life and especially being creative. Like, like you said, the, you kind of like, as an adult, you're like, Oh, I could do that, but I got these things. And for me, it's my anxiety. I just, mm -hmm. I start getting, Oh, being overwhelmed is my kryptonite. So if I have too much on my plate, I just shut down and I just don't do anything. I just like a freeze. Um, 
doing a little bit of shrooms like breaks that away and then but i'm still like totally functional it's weird it just like shatters this invisible uh kind of boundary i guess that my brain has created um and like the creativity just like flows it's like unstoppable so that's been a really interesting thing in terms of music if you wanted to try that (laughs) i've done i've done that before i had a um so i I actually i can't do uh i can't take mushrooms anymore um i found out pretty quickly there that uh they give me seizures um and no yeah Yeah. you know probably maybe three out of eight times and i've never had a seizure before in my life and and i I did some research on this and i think it's a pretty rare thing but uh it does happen to uh, a certain amount of people um and nothing it's never happened with any anything else any other uh, substance um but uh for whatever reason you know so i i I do kind of stray away or, or will choose other things but um uh, yeah. there was a time a number of years ago where I did a series, I, I, I was painting and I did this one painting of these, uh, kind of, uh, Chinese, um, uh, cherry blossom flowers, like pl- pink, whatever. And the first, yeah. the first one yeah. was, 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 was pretty good. And the second one was a little better cause I had the, the experience of the, of the, the first one. And then the third one, I, uh, I kind of microdosed with some, with some sh- shroom, uh, chocolates, uh, some tr- truffles yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be damned if the third one wasn't like 10 times more three dimensional. I mean, the painting was just better overall to, to a certain degree, yeah, to a degree yeah. that the other two didn't look the same really because the third was so much better. Um, and, you know, this is something that, uh, that is, that is happening uh, on a pretty large scale in San Francisco, especially with the tech takeover. And, you know, what, what you have here is you have a, uh, a city that has always been big on kind of uh, consciousness and expanding your your mind and um, that sort of thing. Uh, the whole hippie movement in San Francisco has always been very yeah. very liberal and progressive, but um, super progressive, yeah, yeah. But what you have now is this huge tech influx, and I I don't think they're not related. I think they're very much related. I think that the the reason oh, absolutely. the reason why we have this tech tech influx and the, the reason why all of the, you know the internet has more or less been birthed out of here and uh you know the best devices and computers and all this stuff uh is because people have been doing this for a long time and now you have these people in tech companies that are microdosing with these little bits of you know lsd or mushrooms or whatever yeah and and, uh seeing a very very real benefit just like you have and i have and so many other people yeah and it's this weird thing where you know again the curtain is being dropped the the veil is being lowered Mm -hmm. where it's like oh these are you know what they are they're just tools they're tools for your mind. Yeah. And of course you can, you can take anything too far. You can take t- cheeseburgers too far. You can take, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. you can take running too far. I've known people that have yeah. done so much running that they've, you know, uh, wrecked their knees and their back and their, yeah. you know, their, their body fat has dropped to unhealthy levels. I mean, anything you can take to extremes. Um, yeah. but, but, but if you do them in, in, in small metered amounts, and of course, if you want to let loose and have, you know, have fun every now and then you can do that, but you can do that with alcohol yeah. too, you know, and then, and, and in, yeah. my experience, in my experience, doing that with alcohol has made me feel the worst of, of any of these substances. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, you know, and yet that's the most, uh, widely utilized and, um, and, and, and sold and advertised and all this stuff. It's, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. Yeah. It will once again, again, the conspiracy theories, which I hate really calling it that because in my book, it's all truth. Right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, alcohol is, it's, it's a suppressor. It suppresses you. I mean, for the most part, maybe one or two beers, you're kind of feeling, it depends on the person. Right. But it really is a suppressor. And, um, it's so interesting to me. It's, it's really one of the most dangerous drugs. Really. It's, it's killed more people than I'd say any drug. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. I might be, butchering any statistic but um but i wouldn't trust those statistics anyways <laughs> but you know i'd say that they uh the, it's really it's really awful alcohol and um and then you have you know shrooms and acid and i also love acid it's, it's totally different in its own right but um they're like highly controlled substances the government isn't for and it's like what has it ever done but like really open your mind i mean yes once again you can take it too far but I've never met anyone who, who hasn't done one of those things who didn't say it didn't change their life in some way or like how they look at things and it opens up doors that can't get closed again, um, in your, in your, in your psyche. And I think that's like really telling and it's like, that's somehow a bad thing, you know? So I, I love, that's another reason why I'm so 
proud to be part of the Bay because they just, Bay Area just pushes everything, pushes all that. And um, there's something, it's just the consciousness there is so much more progressive and advanced. And I'd call it pretty Aquarian right now, like, especially the way it is right now. I mean, I, I definitely, when I was living there, I saw the big change of, you know, the tech boom really went crazy and like it did change, you know, and, and changed in a way that I was a little nervous about in terms of the cultures and, you know, all the artists being pushed out and the housing crisis and all that stuff. So I, I did see like that negative side of it. That's why I call it Aquarian. Cause it's like Aquarian energy at its, uh, its best is expansive and, um, it's, it is really into technology and like pushing it. Um, but then, you know, there's all these other fallout factors, um, that I've noticed, but it, it kind of reminds me of like Atlantis mm. where it's like, there's all this technology and all this stuff happens. And then like they explode themselves or whatever happened back then. Um, that's how I feel about the Bay area. So it's, it's, it's a, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta know, <laughs> you gotta like stay grounded because it's easy to get really into all of that, like tech and progression, all that stuff. But in a way you can kind of lose your humanity through that. For sure. So it's, it's, it's interesting there, but, well, it's, it's but a, still it's what a, a cool place. Yeah. It's, it's a never, uh, what's well, it's a balance and, uh, it, it's always going back and forth. You know, I heard a interesting thing about, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fairly like, you know, business minded and savvy and that sort of thing. And I remember reading something that someone said that, you know, in your typical business, uh, corporate business, um, tech company, whatever, you know, what you have is you have these corporate people that are kind of, you know, funding things and, and, and structuring things and all this. And they get to a certain point where everything is structured and everything's figured out, but then nothing is progressing and they don't understand why anything is progressing. And so what they do is they turn to the creatives and the create, and they're like, Hey, what can we mm -hmm. do to, to get people, you know, uh, engaged again? And let's come up with some creative yeah. things to, to get things sparked and exciting. And then the creatives kind of figure that stuff out and then they go back and forth yeah. and, and they really do kind of rely on each other, you know? And I guess, you know, being a San Francisco, yeah. uh, native, um, I, you know, it, we're always talking about how, you know, tech is taking over and, and I don't think it's overall necessarily a bad thing. I just, I, I, I do hope that, you know, like that relationship between the corporates and the creatives that, you know, we, we're constantly, you know, we just, uh, there was a, a bill passed that, uh, said that, you know, you can't, um, you can't move into certain areas and start complaining about nightclubs and shutting them down, that sort of thing, because then you're going to have no more culture and no more events and no, yeah. more, no more creativity. And, and I mean, artists have well, already, yeah. it's, it's like, it's like the, the basis of, of the Bay, right? It's like, yeah. you can't come in, clear out all the stuff that made the Bay, why you wanted to move there. Right. Like that. Right. you know <laughs> yeah because then you just have a, a, a corporate you know mega wonderland and that you know everyone's you know dancing around pointing hr fingers at each other and uh you yeah. know <laughs> everything's a safe space and it's like geez you gotta you gotta you gotta take some risks you know you gotta have uh you gotta have that creativity there and 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 the the, the kind of free thinking and uh the ability to which is why what I, why i love podcasts so much is um, we have the ability to, you know, um, say whatever it is we want and not be, um, you know, um, uh, censored by uh, X, Y, and Z producer that thinks it would be better if we talked about this or didn't say that or whatever, you know, I mean, this is, uh, again, probably, you know, uh, the, the government, they is uh, rolling over in their grave, you know, freaking out because uh, podcasts are, are a major thing right now. I mean, they're huge. You look at Joe Rogan's podcast and they're talking about, yeah. uh, you know, DMT trips and he's talking to Neil deGrasse yeah, Tyson. Totally. And he's talking to Bernie <laughs> Sanders and like, this is a, to a total meltdown of, of everything that the yeah. government has kind of, um, you know, uh, structured around us to, you know, the, 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 the cage that we live in, you know, and, and I think it's, right. um, it's, it's the best thing ever. And, you know, I, I it's, 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 it's weird territories that we're wading through, but I think it's it, in the end, it will, uh, it, it'll be good. Well, well, what's so ironic about that whole thing is that the resistance from the day is, it's so funny because at the end of the day, like it just helps them in the end, you know, it's like, by the way, you guys are humans too, you know, like, it, like you have the same needs that we all have, you know, and it's so the resistance there is something that's so fascinating to me because it's almost like, there's just such a strong 
uh, construct that's been built around government. And these things have to be this way and it gets really rigid. And it's like, sometimes I just don't even know what they're fighting. Do you like, I just want to be like, do you even know what you're fighting for anymore? You know, like, have you really thought about it? Like, cause you know, the whole reason why America exists, right. Is cause somebody was like, fuck this. I'm going to try something new. And like, that's why we're here. Right. So it's like, why? Like, why? It's once again, like, Sam says, so why take away the one reason why you, like, actually like being here? Right. You know? So, it's always so funny to me. I'm like, what are you fighting, what are you fighting for, bro? <laughs> 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 Don't you want to have fun and, like, chill out and, like, you know? Right. Like, you know, enjoy the fruits of all of our labor out here, like, the stuff that we're doing, you know? Totally. That's so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your your transition to to LA from from the Bay. What what kind of sparked that? Was it uh, you were you know uh, transitioning for the the makeup thing? Yeah. So I like I said, there's like a moment where I I've, I've been doing makeup for 14 years now, and I started in the Bay Area. I you know a lot of people don't know this really about film and, and stuff, but everyone thinks everything's done in LA. And like, I assure you it's not at all. And there's, there's films being shot in the Barry and there's TV shows. And, um, also I did tons of stuff for tech companies, like little commercials. And, you know, I was in Silicon Valley a lot doing makeup, but, um, but yeah, so I, I just, I wanted, I avoided moving to LA this entire time like everyone's like you gotta move away and i'm a rebel like if somebody tells me this is like my downfall like the stubbornness factor but if somebody's like you should do this it's better i'm like no fuck you i'm never gonna do that even though it might actually benefit me this is something i've learned about myself so i'm like no i'm not going to la and i also was like you know i really like lo- i had the most beautiful apartment in oakland in rockridge that i'm still miss to this day um and i had my life there and i was raised there so i was like kind of scared to leave you know like once again we're talking the bay area it's the most beautiful bubble you can live in. It is that though, a bubble. So eventually it was just kind of like, okay, I think I was, I was building my career up. I did, um, I was finally doing some cool indie films. Like I did, sorry to bother you, which I don't even heard of that movie, but, um, that was also shot in Oakland and it did really well. Uh, it's like kind of a weird cult, like Sundance film. I it's, you should watch it. It's ridiculous. Um, but that kind of took me, it allowed me to do makeup in a way on a creative level that you really don't get to do. Um, like just unorthodox makeup kind of applications that uh, you don't really see. And that kind of like bumped me into the world that I am doing now with Euphoria. Um, but I, but yeah, so I just, I did that film and, and then I, I met uh, one of my best friends who I work for on Euphoria. She, I met her in Oakland on a film and then we, she and I kind of, blossom together in the film industry and um she would just bring me on to jobs or you know we'd always try to work with each other and um so she lives in LA so she would start bringing me down to LA so I was living in like half and half I was splitting my time and I'd just go stay with her and work on a film or do a commercial or whatever but I was like not living letting go of my apartment and this is when like the housing crisis is happening right so four or five years ago and like no one wanted to let go of their house or their apartment. Cause then they'd never get back and the rent would go up and it was a whole thing. So I was like, I'm not getting, you know, I'm not letting go of my apartment. Um, but eventually I just, I was just down here so much. And then I, then I got onto euphoria, uh, which was like an eight month project. And then it was just like, and I was making really quality money, like finally in the union, you know, where I could, just finally moved down here and I was just like fuck it it was like the middle of the show um I was dealing with some housing drama in 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 Berkeley Oakland area and I was just like I'm done with this like I'm done it's I'm down here my energy's down here I need to have my cats down here I need to have my stuff like I just need to finally be down here because I knew euphoria was going to be a success and it is and I was like I'm going to be down here doing this show for seasons upon seasons like I might as well just be down here so I finally like full on moved down here in the middle of the show, which was a complete nightmare. Um, but I'm glad I did it. <laughs> like I said, I'm finally now like moving into my house because I moved in. You know, I had a couple months left on the show. I moved in middle of that. Then I had a month off, and then I went to another job with my friend Donnie, my best friend, who I was mentioning earlier, uh, to Georgia. So like I've not spent time here. I've just been working. Um, so it's been nice to finally get 
dig deep in my roots of my house right now. But, um, but yeah, it was just time, you know, I, I, I'm glad I moved when I did because there'd been a lot of times I could have moved earlier where it would have been like a hardship in terms of like, am I making the right money? Like, you know, and for people that don't know, I mean, indie films are out there and they're independent films for reasons because they don't hire union crew and union crew is way more money. I mean, the, the price of your project like quadruples or even more so just because of all the benefits we get. So, um, so, you know, I was making money, but I wasn't making the money I needed to make. So after I got into the union, it was just like, I was just in LA so much. It was just time to, to make it happen. And I'm glad it's, I've been coming to LA for 10 years now, off and on just visiting friends and really did not like it 10 years ago. Um, it's a way cooler place now than I, than I remembered it growing up. Um, of course I was biased about it cause I'm from the Bay and there was always like this dumb rivalry between NorCal and SoCal. Right. But, um, you know, a lot of my friends who got pushed out <laughs> during the, the crisis, what I call the housing crisis in the Bay because of the tech boom, like they're all down here now and they're all doing crazy, awesome art. And it's just, there's, there's just a lot, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I, I was resisting, but now I'm like, Oh my God, there's just so much opportunity in terms of creativity. Now, like, of course there's all these industries going on and, and yes, it's bigger. So, you know, yes, there's a lot going on, but I just feel like there's so many artists down here now that it is, it almost reminds me of the Bay in certain ways um, where there's this like this community of like avant-garde artists that just do weird stuff and like photographers that work with, you know, like my friends who throw parties and then, and then they want to do something with film and it's just like all these cool worlds kind of melt together and it, it's really cool. Like there's stuff that goes on. I don't even know what to call it. I'm like, is this an event or an art show or like a performance space? And they're like, I don't know. It's a thing. And you go and it's like this totally immersed experience of all these artists creating um, just a world you step into as an event. And it's like, this is not, what I've experienced before. So I don't know. I, I feel like there's, there's a lot of cool stuff down here that I'm just barely mm -hmm. tapping into myself. Um, and like, you know, having film bring me down here is great. And I love that. I love working in film. I love being able to like tell a story with makeup and, and being creative. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think well, I haven't even like fully tapped into what Ellie I think has to offer me, you know, I'm still meeting people and it's just, it's endless. It's really endless down here. So for that, I'm thankful. And I think it's, um, I think it's absolutely where I need to be right now. I don't think I would be doing what I'm doing. I would not, I would not have the amount of success that I have right now if I was still in the Bay area. And I hate, it pains me to say that. Um, but it's just where my trajectory was going. So for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, you know, I, I, I definitely see myself, uh, ending up down there, I think eventually, but I think, you know, you probably, like, just like you said, you made the right call to kind of, you know, there's the classic, oh, well, you know, I moved to LA and I'm living on a couch and I'm trying to make it. And, you know, that's kind of always what I'm, what I try to avoid, you know, I want to, uh, yeah. I want to have something that's pulling me down there or have something figured out already. You know, I mean, uh, what I'm envisioning is I'd like this podcast to get to a certain level where it just makes more sense for me to be down there where all, yeah. of, you know, the, where there's a, a huge amount more of, uh, you know, uh, musicians and DJs and, and people in the yeah. music industry and that sort of thing. Um, you know, because, you know, San Francisco, it absolutely has a, a rich scene, but, um, it is the kind of thing where people kind of come in to San Francisco and then go back to mm -hmm. where, where they uh, are yeah. from. And a lot of times they're from LA or whatever. Um, but it, you know, right. I, I, I just, I get the feeling and I, I think I'm right here that people, uh, tend to go into LA and spend more time there because, you know, um, there's all these other things going on. So they might fly in for yeah. a show and then they also DJ at this thing. And then that, you know, that sort of thing. Right. So I think, in, you know, it might, uh, might end up, um, uh, eventually just kind of happening um yeah and that, and that's you're smart i mean that's how you need to do it. i mean I, like i said i never really had the setup the proper setup to move down here like i did you know i think i just woke up and i looked around and i was like okay i'm like in it i'm like doing a really dope show i know tons of people that want to work with me like i have a foundation finally to just mm. finally just live here now and and feel like financially i'm secure you know, and then, you know, like also like having friends, like I didn't want to, you know, 
I never feel like I knew enough people down here. And, um, and now I do. So it's just like, you'll know when the time is right. And I think I can tell you're kind of like, I can tell you've been thinking about it <laughs> and I want you to know I understand. Um, <laughs> but you'll sure. know, you'll know when the time is, you know, and, it, and it's, it, there's so much down here. Like you'll, you'll do great down here for sure. Um, but yeah, the Bay, it's one of those things with the Bay. There's like a, it's like a weird, it like doesn't let you leave kind of, you know? And I, I really was like, Oh God. And the final when I left, I was like, why didn't I do this before? Like, not because it was anything to do with the Bay, but it was just like, it inhibited me from really wanting to explore elsewhere. And I think like totally diving deep into LA now and being down here, I'm just like, wow, like there's just so much, uh, there's just so many doors you can walk through down here. And yes, there are a lot of shit show ones too. Like you have to, you know, buy or beware, but, um, there's just a lot of cool people. And, and if, you know, you're the type of creative person you're in a music, like you'll, you'll meet your people, you know, like, it's that's what I've noticed is that there's like it is so spread out down here that the community you build is within all the connections you make mm. um and that's what I think makes me feel grounded here as a person so totally yeah I think uh I think yeah I think you're right the time will come and I do have I have a good amount of friends down there now um uh Bruce and I have a buddy named Caleb who just moved down there he was uh also on the podcast uh, pretty recently um, and yeah, he kind of just moved down there to kind of, uh, you know, further expand his, um, uh, his network and, and, uh, you know, what, what it is he wants, he wants to do. He's in music and that sort of thing. Um, so I definitely, yeah. definitely see it happening. Um, and I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. About it. Yeah. No. And here's the thing. This is what's so funny. And this is also, I don't know why it's like this, but everyone's like, oh, you're moving to LA. It's like, it's literally five and a half hours away. Like, it's not that far. No. You know, I, I like. I know it's not, I can't just like, you know, say hi during the day and come back home, but like, it's really not that far. <laughs> like right. you could always go back to the Bay on a weekend. Like it's like, it's so, it ends up being like, they're like sisters to me, you know? So I don't know. I, I think it's, I just remember building up such a big deal. Like I'm moving out of country is what it right. felt like. And then like, here I am. It's like, it's really not far at all. Well, they've got the, you know, cause my family's still in the Bay area and I, and I like, I miss them, but yeah. I think I see them more now than I did when I lived there because I make more of a time to do it, you know? So, well, and they've got the light train that they're working on. And I mean, who knows when that will be finished, but, um, that's supposed to get you. From I've been LA. waiting. Yeah. In like 45 <laughs> minutes or something. Right. Crazy. Yeah. No, I've been, I voted for that. I, I remember like, I remember there was like, there was some bill they were just trying to pass, like even just get it like on the map. And I remember, like, I think I registered the vote to vote for it. I was so excited about it. <laughs> um, but that was a million years ago. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll be, like, 80, finally enjoying it. Like, look, right. kids, I've been waiting my whole life for this. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, good. so um, let's, let's talk about your, uh, your, your new single. You, uh, you just uh, put out a, a, a Tech House track. Is it Tech House? House, whatever. Uh, called it's, like... It's breaks, it's I'd breaks. say. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It, it, did you hear it? Have yeah. I have I sent it? No. Yeah, okay. yeah. I checked it out. It's it's fantastic, um, and and just <laughs> uh, yeah, just labeled as house, and it does have some kind of tech house elements. It does does have uh, it does sound a lot like breaks, um, and I found it really really interesting and awesome, um, and I wanted to to ask you about it because well, a it's um, you released it on Admit One Records. Um, and it got to what number thirty six in uh, on Beatport, I think, Some, somewhere around there. I think it got past that. I think it got to like thirty two breaks release or something. And then my a buddy of mine, Sean, who's Ice Creams, who's also in San Francisco. By the way, you should interview all these guys. By the way, because they're great and they're pumping out amazing music like in their sleep. Like I don't know how they do it. They just they they go off. Um, they're like really close homies of mine. But, um, yeah, he did the remix for it. And that was, like, number 22 bass house release or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it did well. I mean, I, in all honesty, that track was written. That track's had a very, very long uh, journey <laughs> to finally be in the public eye, which happens sometimes, right? Like, yeah. I had it signed. I think I wrote that, like, four years ago or three years ago. I mean, it's actually kind of old. And I hate to admit that, but... It's true. And I think it's, it's good that it came out now. I don't think, I think it's like in a better time for it right now mm -hmm. to be released, but yeah, it was signed. It was unsigned. It kind of sat dormant. I almost like going to be free download, but then, you know, my, my homies at admin one, 
uh, one of the guys, his name is Nate, Nate 08. <clears throat> uh, he also full circle, like he was one of my fans and come see me perform at EPR. And like, we became friends later. And then now he started his record label. And, and, um, I think he was just, so he was like, what the fuck? You know, like him and his friends were like, what? I think we were hanging out, partying, playing it or whatever. And he's like, where is it signed to him? Like, it's not signed. He's like, what? He's like, we're signing this. And it's just like so cute. Cause it's like, you know, it's once again, it's full circle, right? It's like, he was a fan and now he's blowing up and like record label. And now I'm signed to his label. So I, I love that. Um, I love those little like connections that happen, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, their label's doing really well. And I think I actually feel like, I mean, they're in the Bay. I feel like it's, it, it could be like a next dirty bird type of presence in the Bay area as dirty bird did have when it was really popping off. And yes, dirty bird's still there, but I feel like once, cause Barkley moved to LA at some point, right. Doesn't he live in LA? Yeah. yeah. So I feel like once that happened, I was like, I don't know if it's still a Bay area label anymore. Love you, but right. <laughs> you're right. making room for new, New labels to come through. So yeah. they're doing really good and I'm super proud to be on it. Um, but yeah, it's just weird that it's finally come out and what a weird time to have a track come out. In some ways I was kind of like, Oh God, like, is it going to be appreciated? But I'm like, no, I think maybe more than ever because people are home <laughs> listening to music. Right. So right. I was like, all right, I guess it's, you know, we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, you know, I, I tend to think that, uh, you know, even though you, you made it four years ago, I mean, I've had tracks like that too. And I've, I've heard lots of uh, producers talk about that, that, Oh, I made this and it sat around on my hard drive. And then I, you know, touched back in and did a little stuff. And, you know, some tracks you bang out in a, a weekend and they're great. Uh, and some tracks just need to, to marinate and you mull them over and, you know, you have this, par this thing that you can't give up on because you, you know, it's got this awesome th thing to it. Um, and then you yeah. finally find the, 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 whatever motivation or, or it comes to you, whatever idea that it is that needs to happen in there to, to kind of see it through. Um, and then, you know, it comes out and I tend to think that stuff comes, I mean, cause it doesn't sound like a four year old track at all. It sounds like a very yeah, current, no, new track, you. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, it was really, it was because it was happening to me hanging out and I'd given up on it. I was like, whatever. I mean, this is when I was like fully immersed in doing makeup too. So I was like, you know, whatever y'all want to sign this track. Great. You know, but they were, they were like, this is really fucking weird and different and interesting. And like, we don't have, like we, they wanted to like broaden their sort of, I guess, genres, if you will, on their label. So it was like, they were, they're the ones that were like, no, we need this. So it was like, it, you know, but I think that their ear and where they were at, which was like, we started talking about this last year, you know, was, the music was different. And as you know, the, the, the music changes so quickly in these scenes with the genres, you know, it wasn't, nobody was really ready for it like two or three years ago when it really was done. And I, I remember, I mean, I, and that's the thing, like, and I'm sure you feel this way when you write a track, but it really takes on a life of its own and you kind of have to let it go. It's like, you're just birthed a baby into space and you cannot tell it what job to have, what kind of clothes to like, like you, that kid's going to be its own person and you have to kind of just like let it go. And that's how I feel with this track. It was just like, I don't even know what to call it. Like another, um, another good friend of mine is Nick Monaco and he hit me up. He's like, dude, he's like, this is the weirdest shit. He's like, what is it like sci-fi breaks? He's like, He's like, you need to make more of this. Like, this genre needs to be explored. Like, the world needs to hear this. And I was like, whoa. Like, you know, coming from Nick Monaco, who makes, like, such different music. And he's, you know, he's another old homie that used to come see me EPR who's, like, blown up. So it's really sweet. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's weird. And I, I do. I do want to do more music like that. But if there's something I've learned about making music is that you can, like... I think, I think I heard Justin Martin say this in an interview when I was really young, when I was like just listening to Dirty Bird, when it was like brand new to the Bay. Um, he was just like, never, ever try to remake a hit. He's like, never try it. He's like, you'll fail. He's like, don't do it. Just like love it, own it, give it away. And then like make a new track and like never try to go back, you know? So I always try to think about that. And that, I feel like that's, you know, I've had my ups and downs with production. I haven't produced a ton but, you know, like, my first track was signed to Anabatic, and that was, like, crazy, because it's, like, Worthy's label, and it was, like, this really cool, wild, kind of raw breaks track. Um, 
And, you know, I, I tried to recreate that later and it bit me in the butt many times. Or it was, I just couldn't do it, you know, and people, and then people wanted to hear that. And I think that was why I got a little uh, frustrated with music because I think my weakness is, is that I don't, I, I don't know how to always, how do I put this properly? It's like, as I've, like I said, as I write tracks, they're all very different when I really hear them. And I don't really know how to stay consistent to one style. Um, and I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse or whatever, but it's, it's, it's fucked me in the way that people want, they're like, Hey, can you remix this track? We really like this remix. You did can you remix this for the label. And I'm like, yeah. And then I try to do it the way that I think they want to hear the part of me that they want to hear. And it just doesn't come out right. And I, I think I got tired of feeling like I couldn't, I guess, provide or, or fulfill what people wanted to, to hear. Um, and, and that's another thing I think as an artist, it's so frustrating. It's like a fan of you should honor who you are as an artist and what you do in all of its ranges, right? There's ups and downs and ebbs and flows. And like a, a, a fan of your music is going to see all those things, you know? And like, I think it's just hard because, people really like to pick and choose parts of you that they like um, and not the whole kit and caboodle, you know? So I think I got really frustrated with that. And that's how I was like, okay, I'm like definitely doing makeup now. Cause I like, it's <laughs> just like, I need to stop, <laughs> you know? So this track coming out, it's kind of like re it's kind of pulled me back into the world again and, and given me, especially now everything I've been through and, and especially now what's going on right now. I mean, I definitely have like a different outlook on music that, uh, I'm definitely going to start looking into and, and I've been working on since I've been home as well. But that's just the most frustrating part to me is just like the expectation people put on you as an artist to, to be this certain way or to keep making this certain kind of music. And I just, I'm not that kind of artist. I just never have been. I've always dabbled in like tons of different like mediums. And even as a makeup artist, I people want to see me put gems on people's faces. And I'm like, that's not the only thing I do. Like I also do other things. And so it's like, you know, I'm not a one trick pony and I think people really expect that a lot. And I think it takes a long time as an artist to really get people to appreciate your entire process. Mm. Um, and I just don't think I had the time to, to focus on that at that point, you know? Totally. No, I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I mean, I have, I have uh, of a whiteboard here with uh, my four different musical aliases. Um, because, you know, I sit down and, I, <laughs> and I, I make stuff and, you know, I, I think that's kind of the classic creative brain, right? Is you, you're pulled in all these different directions. It's like, oh, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. You know, and you make this stuff. And, you know, what I, what I don't want is I don't want to sit down and make stuff and then not have it fit with my, my whatever alias uh, or genre right. and then just let it sit on a hard drive. Like I want it to have its own outlet. And so, you know, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's this weird thing where you have to say, you know, I mean, sure, you have to kind of, you know, wrangle it in a little bit um, so that you can get anything done. But, um, you know, for me, I've found that, you know, and, and during this coronavirus thing, I've, I've been taking, uh, you know, during quarantine, taking the liberty to, uh, I, I really was just like, look, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down. I have this thing where every day I try to work on a track at least one hour. Um, and, uh, you know, Lately, I've just been like every day. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose one of the four different genres that I'm interested in, and mm -hmm, every mm -hmm. every to keep it fresh. So every single day is gonna be either drum and bass or house or future bass. It's, yeah. it's really just it's really just three. Um, but yeah. um, <laughs> um, but, but you know, they all, there's so many gray areas and genres. Yeah, you know, yeah. But it, yeah. but it, but it, but as a creative, it keeps it interesting for me and it keeps it fun. And I think overall, you know, while it might be better to sit down and just do one genre and, and then have like all this music for that one genre, I tend to think that it's 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 not maybe as uh, as as beneficial as it is to let myself just be creative across whatever spectrum and put things where they need to be. You know, you have these boxes that are yeah. called genres, you know, and then right. you, you put the things where they need to go um, as you make them. You yeah. Know? And, um, it's yeah, been, it's been a lot of fun. Killed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's good. I mean that I always tell people when they're feeling stuck, like, especially with music or any, I mean, like even makeup or whatever, whatever the medium is that you're working on, like put your shit down and go do something completely different. Like go mm -hmm. sing or like, yeah, go listen to some sym symphony music from whatever century, you know, like break yourself out of, you know, whatever, 
neural pathway you're trying to keep going down you know it's like you have to like break yourself out of that so that's always been my thing and that's why I think once again this time has been great because I've just been like dabbling in stuff that I've been meaning to do for a long time and like fuck it why not you know like I actually I mean I'm I have my guest bedroom is full of makeup and like storage right now but there's my original pair of turntables under there and I'm like you know what because I'm like starting to get that pressure i need to put tracks out i need to like make music i'm like you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a fucking mix for myself with vinyl for me for fun just to remember why i like got into this was just to enjoy the music right so i'm like that's what i'm working on i'm like i'm getting my turntable set up and i'm like just dj vinyl because i have like so much vinyl that needs to be heard um so yeah it's it, i'm glad you do that because it's mm-hmm. you have to you have to flex all muscles and not just focus on one, one group. But I will say that, um, I always have this argument with people because like I was even talking to Bruce and I was like, yeah, I'm finally putting out walk back. And he's like, Oh cool. He's like, he's like, is it uh, going to be under Kieran Ryder, the alias? And I was like, no, no, no. I'm like, here's the thing. I'm not changing my name for shit. Like Kieran Ryder is an entity that has changed and gone through so much shit. Like why would I devalue where I've been by giving it a new name. It's like, it's like rebirthing yourself in a way that's like, yes, sometimes that's good. Especially if you're working on a project with like maybe another person and like, I can understand that being like, Hey, we're this different entity. But, um, like, no, I want, I want people to look at Kieran and be like, Oh wow. Kieran has like done some weird shit and it's like all kind of different. And, you know, I think it's like honoring your journey by, and giving people the opportunity to like you for all of you. And that's something I deal with um, even like, so like with makeup, like I have a huge, I have a pretty big fan base on, on Instagram and most of them are interested in my makeup, but like, I also do like healing artwork and, you know, music. And, and sometimes I bring that out. Sometimes people don't want to see that stuff and like, I'll get unfollowed, you know, all the time for, you know, every time I post something about music, like I'll get unfollowed, you know? And I'm just like, that's fine. Cause like, I don't, the only people I want to like, be there is are the people that like accept all of me and like who I am not just bits and pieces of me and that's something that I'm a big advocate on so I encourage you to consider just putting it all out there under under just you know <laughs> just do right. you man yeah. do one name <laughs> totally. Totally. yeah because it's all a part of you you know and it's like it's cool to see you like I think it's cool to see the range like I like love it when I see artists that I'm like oh you also do this and this like that's just adds your tool belt instead of being like these little marketed different people, you know, like so many times people like, you need to have your own music account on Instagram. I'm like, first of all, I'm not managing more than one account. I can barely handle one right now. Like it's a fucking full-time job. Secondly, no, <laughs> like this is me. Why would I change that? You know, yeah. but I, I hope something gets shifted around that concept because, you're just creating more work for yourself at the end of the day. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, uh, uh, Dead Mouse is a great example. You know, he put out that album a while back that had some, like, hip-hop with Cypress Hill, and it was, you know, housey, and then he had some weird kind of, like, breaky type stuff. And, and uh, But, you know, uh, people, like, I also read, uh, read a quote that, you know, people are going to remember you for, for what they like best about you. And the rest of the yeah. stuff is just going to, you know, it, it, if it doesn't do anything, then they don't really focus on that. But um, people yeah. that do like what they like about you. They're going to they're going to hold on to that. Um, yeah. And, you know, for, for myself, I, I, I do kind of put them under these different labels because it helps for me. I think more than than, you know, worrying about, uh, you know, being too scattered in my marketing or whatever. Um, for me, it, it, the different aliases uh, in, in different genres helps my brain as I'm creating this stuff to compartmentalize. And, you know, you have all these sounds, all these sound packs and all the, you have a, a blank DAW template that, or, that there, you know, is, yeah. it, it could be whatever you want. It could be, you know, African tribal music, or it could be country, or yeah. it could be whatever. And so, yeah. you know, being able to have these kind of like, like boxes I can put stuff in helps me make a more refined sound for each one. But then of course those all, uh, this is what kind of 
helped me come to terms with it is it all goes under my Scott Brio website and it all, it all goes back to go. one, you know, all of it's linked to one place. So people kind of understand, Oh, this is his uh, future based project and this is his drum and bass project and this is his house stuff. And um, so kind of yeah. compartmentalizing, but also still, yeah, not having it like three different aliases that I'm trying to, to, to do yeah. separate marketing for or something. There's just not enough time in the day. Yeah. You know, well, that makes sense. I mean, that, that I can, I can appreciate that. Cause I, I, I don't know. I, you're probably a more of an, like, um, I always kind of break people down in this way where there's intellectually centered, moving centered and emotional centered. And we always have an order of operations. Mm. So I think first, I feel second, I act sec like last, like that's my order of operations. You'll meet people who act first and we know those people right they act first and then they feel and then they think and it's like whoa and those people are usually really good at you know they're usually good better at like at being athletic or something because they're just sure. better at being in their body but i'm like i'm an overthinker like mm -hmm. i just i'll think something to death so having things kind of separated in my head does help me function better as well so i i can i can appreciate that for sure totally yeah i'm, I'm the same way yeah <laughs> And I, I, I uh, yeah, I really like you to go back to your, your track, uh, walking back. I, I, it does sound like kind of its own little like genre, um, you know, uh, or, or, or what could be the birth of a t type of genre. Um, cause it, it, it's kind of what, what struck me is I, this is kind of how my, my future base is, is it has these gaps in it where there's lots of sparseness between the, the sounds and you've kind of, ret yeah. you've re retained a groove while also being this kind of like broken beat type thing. Um, but it still sounds kind of housey. It sounds kind of breaky. Um, and I think that's where the magic happens between, you know, um, working within confines, so to speak, of genres and that sort of thing, but also um, letting yourself just uh, put out whatever you think sounds good, whatever sounds right, you know? Yeah. Well, and it, um, that track is awkward to me sometimes because there's the second main main break of that track is very long and it's um I, I love it when like you hear you can hear the room it's in like mm. i just like you know there, there's it's like a really long break and, and there'll be like these little sounds pinging off the walls in different ways and so it's, you're kind of building this space that you're listening to you can almost kind of visualize a room right where there's like different things reverberating over here and and all that. And I like that it has this breathing nature to it mm. instead of just rah, 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 like fucking, you know, volume wars, the whole, the whole thing. I mean, I think a lot of people had issues with it because if you play that track live and when that break comes, like it's a little weird because it's like kind of <laughs> quiet, you know, and like, but I kind of like, I'm also a little bit like, yeah, fuck you. Like, right. think about it for a minute. Don't yeah. just be like, ah, you know, so. <laughs> Um, so it, it, I think that's where it got some discrimination and even I had some people like, yeah, maybe we could just redo this part. And I, and I remember being like kind of humoring it before we, I put it out and I was just like, no, I'm like, I just can't change it anymore. It's just, it's done. It's some, the cement is dry with this track. Like <laughs> if it's not going to be signed to this label, it's just going to be a free download for whoever wants it. Right. Um, but, but I like, I, I think that's why it's different. Um, because it, it's not as expected um, in terms of that mood and sort of breathing nature that it gives. Um, and it's kind of slower. Like it's, it's kind of got, it's, I, it, I like it cause it's kind of creepy. I'm really into creepy sound, you know, where it's kind of like there's a creepy monster following you in the sci-fi world. I don't know. It's kind of reminds me of, I should send you my but, future um, base stuff. But I like that. My, my most recent feature yeah, no, base please. is really fucking creepy. I, I played it for this uh, girl that I'm uh, kind of casually dating, and she like had this moment where she like, <laughs> should I be concerned? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes, that's my kind of music yes, right now. I'll yes, send it to please, you. You'll love it. Me. Yeah, no, I love that. I mean, somebody. I remember I once had somebody be like, "If you could define Kieran Ryder uh, in three words, what would you say?" And I was like, Ugh. "I was just like dark." uh dirty and mysterious or something like that you know just like weird and 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 interesting and make you, music that makes you think i think i like i love i like so much love i think what i, I really have always been a huge fan of dirty bird like i said before um i mean they've really blown up into something much different now which is great for them i'm like so happy for them but i feel like what i really originally was drawn to them is that they were putting on music and this is like when they first 
we're just doing those parties in the park and it was like 10 years ago. Um, and it was interesting. I had, it had these breathing moments and it, it was using different sounds, you know, like you could tell they, lo- they like used di- drum kits that you wouldn't normally use, you know, like pulling those into like something more stereotypical. And it was, it was just interesting the way they did it and it, it had more personality to it and it was interesting and it felt like music. Mm. It didn't feel like a track, you know? And I think, like, especially Justin Martin, like, he'll make a track and it's like a track, but it's also music. And I'm like, I don't know how you did that, but you're a wizard. You just, right. <laughs> you just made a song. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you, know? you, you listen to Clouds, his Clouds album. And it's, it's oh, so I mean, it's, it's, it's in the tech house genre, but it's just music. It's music. It's yeah. Music. And I think, I think we all strive for that. I mean, I, I, growing up really I was always fascinated so I, and this is like the merge of music and film for me I've always been fascinated with music and film like when I was really young I remember being like 10 or 8 and be like mom who picks the music like that was my concern not anything else and um it always seemed like the sort of unattainable thing but I think to be able to write music for a film would be like the end all be all dream really you know like to just fully soundtrack and and also be able to pick other music and like to really create the feeling of like a mix on a fucking narrative story like a picture story like that to me is like what would be so effective and amazing so yeah making music is obviously you know the goal i think for most of us i would assume at least but. totally i mean yeah we, we, we live in so much of a world where um, people just put out tracks to sound like other people or what, what should sound like X, Y, and Z genre. And, you know, a lot of them do well. Um, but I tend to think the stuff that's more timeless um, kind of transcends that. And, you know, people that take a chance on creating something really original, because it is a chance, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of yeah. uh, risking it not being received um, in the right way. Um, and sometimes, you know, you, you'll put out something that doesn't even get any sort of recognition for, I mean, look at Bonobo, you know, Bonobo has been making stuff since like the mid nineties and only recently yeah. exploded. And you look at his discography and it's like, holy shit, he's been making music all this time. And you listen to his yeah. early stuff and it sounds very much in the same vein and it sounds completely relevant, uh, to, to the current time. Um, and so, you know, I think if you just stick with your original goal and you just keep hammering at it. I think yeah. uh, it, music is timeless to a certain degree. If, yeah. you, if you make it in well, a timeless and, way. And those people, I mean, like Bonobo, I mean, I'm always like, like, I mean, there's so many artists I listen to. I think people, I think it's so interesting to find out what people really listen to, you know, like as musicians, mm. like it'd be kind of a cool thing to be like, what do you really listen to? Let's like set out a playlist of like what you listen to. Cause well, I don't listen to electronic, like I don't listen to like, dance music when I'm like at home I mean I have a couple guilty pleasures I dive into but um I listen to all kinds of weird stuff but uh but yeah I mean that's music and like he was obviously ahead of his time that's why people didn't accept it now people are ready they're in a different way of of thinking consciously where they can listen to that music so I I have always and not to like be like but I've always kind of felt that way with my music like I always felt like I had fans but but even DJing like I would like at EPR, so this is something that I always dealt with. Like everyone else at EPR, like everyone else that I worked with, they played like what I like and I was hoped to not offend anyone, but I call it nosebleed electro. This is when I was just like, you know, just the AOK, Steve AOK, just really grindy electro stuff. And, and that's what a lot of kids wanted to hear. But when I went on, I was playing Dirty Bird and this is when it wasn't as big of a deal. Um, and I noticed some people couldn't deal with it and then some you know because i slowed it down i like chilled out it was like okay let's let's have some breathing room here and like break up the space um and and i i got some grief for that like people were just like you need to really play like more upbeat music and i'm just like no like this is what i do this is who i am and i'm an artist and i'm like i literally didn't come here for you to tell me how to be an artist like (laughs) i can go work corporate job for you you know like i don't need to do that right now you know so um that i always felt like and so I played all that music and it, and it was cool. Like, and I, people, like, like I said, I, I have fans and I have people that like, that have, are like Nick Monaco, he would come to see me play. And like now, you know, he's blowing up. Um, and then of course, like five 
you know, cut to five, six years later, those same people who told me I shouldn't be playing that music are fully playing Dirty Bird, going to Dirty Bird parties, like all that, you know? So it's just like, I always felt like my timing might be off sometimes, but I'm also okay with that. Like, I like being able to be like, okay, maybe this is, like you said, maybe this is the next feature genre and I'll do one track and inspire somebody to go off and, and really make it a genre. And like, I'm happy to just be like, go off, you know, go off, right. <laughs> I don't need credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, uh, but, yeah, I'm experiencing that with my future base stuff. You know, it's, um, I've been getting, getting a lot of really good feedback, uh, but I don't know where to put it. I don't, I don't know what to call it. Um, I've kind of landed on somewhere right. around like psychedelic trap, indie dance, yeah. I don't know, electronica. I yeah. don't know. It's somewhere <laughs> in there, but you know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm okay I mean, with it, you know, cause I, I've had people tell yeah. me that it's the best stuff that I've made and uh, they don't even know really where to put it. I mean, cause I, I press them on it. I'm like, well, what, what, what is it? Like, where, 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 where do I put this? And, um, you know, I don't think it matters. I, I'm just going to keep doing it. And, it um, you know, that's great. It's so funny how we, we, as humans have to put things in a category. It's like this, I don't know. It does. It seems like it goes against being a human to me, but it's like in our blood, we can't help it. We have to like put it in something in our brain. And it's, so I always think it's a healthy thing. If something you've created is, is you can't call anything great. Right. Like let it, let it live in infamy. <laughs> I'm not ever being labeled anything ever. I mean, that's the best. And yes, that's how genres are born. As you said. Totally. So I would love to hear your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Um, yeah, please. Where, uh, where, where do you, where do you start with a song? Do you have any particular place or do you just find what sounds good and then go with it? You know, I actually really, there's usually a song that has like, is super heavy and inspiring to me that I'm like listening to at that time that I will, I mean, honestly, I'll just sometimes pull it in and look at how it's laid out and kind of listen to it. And I'll, and I'll kind of be like, how can I make this mine? And I feel like, I feel like I don't want to like give that away. It's like, oh, I'm just taking a song and reworking it. I mean, this is art, right? We're all recycling everything that we hear and do and see. Um, and it never, ever comes out the way that track originally was, you know, but that's usually how I, I begin because I, my, my biggest, um, I guess, self karma as an artist is I'm, I have a really hard time coming up with stuff from scratch, like being completely creative on my own accord. And that's something I'm working on right now with my free time. I'm really trying to just like dive into that deep, pure place of creation of just like uninhibited by any thoughts. Right. So that's what I'm working on now. And I feel like I've really gotten to a good place with it, but uh, I just am bad at it. Sometimes I just, I get all in my head, but if you bring me a track you've been working on and you kind of like half done, I can, I know exactly what needs to be done. I can just, you know, edit something. Same, same with makeup. I, I, somebody like be like, Hey, what if we did this look? And I'll be like, mm, let's do this. And like completely revamp it because I have something to go off of. That's like where my, it, it's just an easier flow for me. So yeah, I mean, creating a track from scratch is hard and it, it like, it's daunting and it takes me a long time. It takes me months to work on tracks and I don't, I, and that's why I'm just so jealous of my friends because they'll be like, yo, I just check this out. You know, I, I FaceTime with all my admit one homies like almost daily at this point. And I'll be like, yo, I just woke up and put this together. And I'm like, I hate you. It's just like so easy, you know, and multiple platforms. Like uh, my friend Sean, who did Ice Creams, who did the remix for Walk Back. Um, interesting story about that. He he got the stems and no one would give him the original. So he had not heard the original at all. He only worked with the stem. So, and I've had a lot of people remix that track, by the way. And like some really, really good DJs, like really good producers have remixed that track. And like, I think they just, because the genre is so weird, they get in their head, something, something happens there. And it just never really like clicked. Like, I'm just like, ah, it's missing something or whatever. And like he did it without hearing the track and it, it kills. It's just a, it's a banger that mm -hmm. remix that. And I, it's not even my, like, that genre is not even my vibe, like bass house. It's like, you know, it's, but like he does it so well. I was just like, this is amazing. Like, this is definitely the remix. Like I found it after three years or whatever. Um, but he's another one. He'll just, he also like does all these different genres. Like he's, he does dubstep and hip hop and um, he's really good at like, main room cheesy like vocal electro stuff like he just bumps that out i'm like 
<laughs> like, and we're talking bangers. Like, I'm like, you could be making making a killing just ghost writing for you know all these whatever you know. Like, he's just he's so good at it. So I always find it. It's hard not to compare yourself as an artist, you know, because every artist has their own way and process. And that's something else I've had to learn where it's just like, I'm my own person and like my process is totally valid. And it's like how I work is fine. It's okay. You know, I don't need to work as fast and as quickly as everyone else or, yeah. you know. So. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, yeah. So it's a struggle for me. And like I said, I always kind of like bring in a song that's inspiring to me. And then I, I kind of just, do it in pieces after that you know it's like you get the meat and potatoes you get like the kick the you know you get the kind of the main main course i call it the meat and potatoes because mm-hmm. it's like the part of the track everything's firing off and then it's just you know like arranging after that you know but like i said it takes me a long time and i get really like i'll get pissed and i'm like i'm not touching this thing for a fucking month like <laughs> It's bad. It's, it's an emotional experience for sure. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not like that now. Like after yeah. having like six months off in my house, I'm hoping to come to like a much more uh, smooth <laughs> process with music. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I am the same way. I used reference tracks. Um, they rarely ever, even if I'm trying to recreate something, which I rarely do, but uh, it never, it never turns out like, like I want it to, it turns into its own thing, which yeah. I think is a good thing. It ends up sounding like me uh, ult- you know, ultimately. Yeah. 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 And isn't that weird? I just find it so interesting with music too. Like without trying to be any type of way, you start noticing your sound and it's something you can't control. It's like your DNA. Mm -hmm. It's like literally your DNA as an artist. And I think that's so fascinating. Like there's nothing more fascinating than that to me. And and hearing, like I can hear tracks. I'm like, Oh, that's John's or that's like, I know whose it is out of all my friends who like kind of make, you know, they're all making music for their label. So there's like a similar vibe, but I can still sound out like who mm-hmm. it is and it's like i i find that so beautiful and interesting totally and it's like i can't control it like this weird sci-fi thing that this always comes out of me and i'm like not a huge sci-fi nerd by the way like i don't know how this happens at all um but i'm i'm down with it i'm like some part of me is trying to say something so right. you know both it i uh i always think about it like this like um you know as a dj you pick all these songs and they're all made by other people maybe some of them are your own but you, you put them together in this kind of like DJ set, you know, but then I, I started thinking about music in the same way and talking about your own sound. I mean, you have all these, you have all these synths and drum machines and samples and presets and sounds you've made and you, you start to accumulate these things. Your ear just pulls these sounds together that become your sound. And each sound is almost like a song that would be in a DJ set, right? Because all of those so- songs in a DJ set are not all yours, yeah. but they're all your sound. Right, right. Right. And so it's the same kind right, of thing totally. with a song, you know? And um, totally. I, I think once you stop worrying about what your sound is, that's where you really kind of just start to find it, you know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I think for me starting up, I was so, I was really trying to like, you know, I think there was a little bit of fear because I was like, okay, you know, I, I don't know. There was this fear. Like, I needed, like, I was starting to, like, really make a name for myself in the Bay. And, like, I, I was like, okay, cool. And now I really need to, like, hit the ground running with production. And, like, well, and I think I just really built this thing up in my head where I just, I, like I said, I overwhelmed myself. And then I just shut down. Like, that's my kryptonite. And I think because I, like, I put all this pressure that I'm, like, this breaks producer because there's, like, not a lot of those. And, <laughs> whatever and then i tried to do like a a not great i mean i don't know i just it was just it was haphazard and um yeah it's exactly right it's like just stop trying to do anything just fucking let it go (laughs) (laughs) and i feel like as like artists and musicians and stuff it's like we're at the end of the day we're really just i think tapping into pieces of like consciousness that are going on around us and we're just like conveying that in our own voice in like a small way so i think if you think about it that way it kind of takes some pressure off where it's like yes it's unique to you because you're you're saying it with your voice but you're really just bringing in you're you're taught you're tapping into like waves of energy that a lot of people are tapping into and, and they're all doing it a little bit differently and you're combining it with this part of energy and and we're just kind of expressing the things around us i think that are that help keep us like moving you know so I don't know. 
it's hard to put like a, a genre on that ever. Right. I mean, right. why, why bother? Right. Right. That's what it means to be an artist. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, um, let's, uh, let's wrap this one up. We're, uh, hour 50 minutes. Um, and I feel like we got a lot, a lot of good stuff, uh, covered some really great topics there. I like that we d- dove a little bit into some conspiracy theory and, um, healing. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I definitely want to do this again. Maybe we'll swing back in a, in a couple of uh, months or so and, and, uh, touch base again and do another podcast. That'd be great. Awesome. You know where I'll be. Yes. Right. We all know where each other are right now. It's so funny. Everyone's like, well, are you going to be busy? I'm like, <laughs> it's like, that's my favorite joke right now. It's like, what's your schedule? Yeah, like, yeah. what? <laughs> Whatever I want it to be. Oh, let me see. <laughs> yeah. <exactly>. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I would love that. This has been fun. I appreciate it. Oh, it's great. For sure. Yeah. Well, thank, yeah. thank you for coming on. Um, and uh, do you have any anything you want to plug? Any upcoming dates or projects or anything? SoundCloud? Just, I mean, just check out the track. Check out Admit One. Um, really cool label coming out of the Bay Area right now. And uh, I fully support them. Um, they're just cool, super... I don't know. I, it's more just them as a family. I just, I just feel like what they're doing is really cool. And they have like a really solid foundation that I think they're, they're moving forward with. And, and they're signing really cool tracks. And they're... They're also, as you know, as it comes, you you know, they're finding the new cool and up and coming artists. So, I just I like they're the future to me of like Bay music scene as it, as it is. So I'm I'm excited for them and I'm honored to be on their label. So obviously check out the track and the remix. But um, besides that, you know, just hi hi, I'm hi. Karen Ryder. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Plugging me. <laughs> Hi. That's awesome. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah. um, thanks for uh, doing this with me. It's been a blast. Um, I'll put all the, the links uh, in the description of this video uh, below. Um, and again, uh, I'm Scott Brio. This is the Voice of Electronic Music. This has been episode number 57 with Kieran Ryder, a.k.a. Kirsten. And uh, we'll guess, see you guys in the next one. If you want to uh, check out any of the previous episodes, we're on basically every major streaming platform. Uh, you can just Google it, Voice of Electronic Music, um, and check them out. And of course, uh, if you like what we're doing here and you want to uh to give back and help us uh keep the lights on you can uh, check out my patreon which is patreon.com forward slash scott brio um we've got different tiers anything you can give helps it just uh, it all goes towards uh more uh more guests coming on and that sort of thing more places i can be and more outreach so um, we will see you guys on the next one and thanks for tuning in peace out thank you bye <laughs>